Last week, I'd been away, I came back to Nottingham, and my co colleagues were really excited. They'd seen a picture of a molecule on the internet. And it's really rare. You can see models and drawings of molecules, but to actually see a picture that somebody has measured, that was really something new. When I was a student, it was believed that you could never see molecules because if you use an ordinary microscope, the wavelength of light is far too long. You just can't see atoms and or molecules. You can use so-called electron microscopes, which have a beam of electrons, but those have to be accelerated so fast to get a very short wavelength that only the toughest molecules can survive. It's a bit like hitting a molecule with a hammer. And only the top ones will survive, the rest just get broken to pieces. So you can't really get pictures, proper pictures of atoms and molecules. Then in about the um, late 80s, um, scientists realized that there was quite a different way of looking at molecules, rather like the way that blind people read braille by feeling through their fingers. So they don't see the letters, but they just feel the bumps. And so their idea was that if you took a very sharp point and moved it along a surface and came to a molecule, then you would feel a bump and you would have to move it up to go over it. And by using a cunning system of lasers to amplify the movement of this pointer, you could then see that there was a blob of something on the surface. And you can use this quite nicely for large atoms. Physicists at IBM's lab made a very famous picture where they spelt the word IBM, or the letters IBM, out of atoms of xenon on a cold surface. And this has become an iconic image. The problem has been that the end of a tip that you can make, even if you make a very sharp metal tip, is too fat to get the details of a molecule. You can see it's much bigger than the, the, the atoms in an ordinary molecule. Now, the breakthrough last week was that some physicists, again at IBM, had the idea of taking a molecule of carbon monoxide, oxygen and carbon, which are really the same size as atoms, and getting it to stick on the end of their point, their point then when they moved it across, they really could begin to see the features of the atoms. And what's excited chemists, their molecule had five rings of carbon, but also for the first time ever you could get not a very clear, but a partly clear image of carbon-hydrogen bonds. People have imagined what molecules look like, they've done calculations, they've made models out of balls and sticks, but it's really good to know that it's what it looks like. It's like hearing somebody described over the telephone and drawing their picture, but then to see that your identikit picture really looks like the person is quite a breakthrough. And the same thing with molecules. The problem is that you can only do these measurements if the molecules are really very cold at very low temperature. So you can't see them yet reacting because what would be really nice would be to see molecules banging together and actually reacting, one turning into another. But we've got to wait a bit of time before that can be done. This molecule is called pentacene. Penta is the Greek for five. It has five rings joined together. Why they chose that, I don't know, except that it's a nice big molecule. And it has five <coughs> members of five rings with six carbon atoms joined together in a row with hydrogens attached. And you can see these five rings very clearly in the image. It would have been a better test if they didn't know what the molecule was and somebody had put it down and said, do your experiment and tell us how many rings there are in this molecule. But when you're starting these things, you really need to know what the molecule is so that you can check whether the measurements you've made are meaningful.